Baby Yoda. They said they're going to replace you. They're going to replace you with baby, baby Princess Leia. What? What's that? <laughs> That's right. Baby Yoda. Number one. All the universe. Nine galaxies. Entire world. Baby Yoda. Number one. That's right, Baby Yoda can never die, because Baby Yoda is the best. The best thing to come out of new Star Wars, at least that's what we're starting to see. So what I wanted to go over today is how an, uh, an article came out on Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you've heard my rant about the first two episodes. I didn't talk about the third one, but I did talk about the first two, and I will link it above my rant about it, as I am being forced to endure through this series, as I will continue to strive for you. But what's really interesting is if you read this article, the man claims that he is a Star Wars fan. He was raised on the original Star Wars series. Yet I'm surprised as to some of his uh, choices. And what's really interesting is he did this fluff piece, right? It's the Hollywood Reporter. And they're basically just reaffirming everything about the show, like why it's so great. Yet we'll take a look and we'll see how the writer of the article actually had to circle back on a question because in his mind, he's seen the original series and he loves them and he knows something's not quite right about Obi-Wan Kenobi and the canon. Because there's simple, logical questions that have been answered previously. But for some reason, this show chooses to ignore them. So let's dive in a little bit. We'll take a look at this. Writer Joby Harold was relieved that Leia was kept a secret. As if anyone was super... Ex like, <laughs> he's the head writer and executive producer on Obi-Wan Kenobi. And he's relishing the opportunity to say one particular name, Leia. I'm pretty sure the show is called Obi-Wan Kenobi. The man's not even the star of his own stinking show. Ewan McGregor? And there's even... I almost played another video and reacted to it. Uh, maybe I'll link it down below. But Robot Head does an, a fantastic video of breaking down why the show deserves criticism. And even in my previous video where I showed you a clip from the original series where Leia does not know who Obi-Wan Kenobi is. So, <laughs> and they even questioned it in this article. And nothing against the actress, Vivian uh, Lyra Blair. She's fine. I, I mean, whatever. She's a little obnoxious, but she's a little kid. What do you expect? And Leia is kind of an obnoxious character. And you can only be as good as the material you are written with. Ewan McGregor is portraying a great coward instead of the, you know, space wizard who's p ever at peace and at calm with the decisions that he made in his life. Man clearly has regrets, but is still moving forward with his mission, right? This is the Obi-Wan from the original series. So anyway, uh, let's see. Fans have already, revis already revisited Star Wars A New Hope in order to analyze whether or not the message to Obi-Wan determines whether the two of them had an adventure nine years earlier because you'd think if she's ten years old, she'd clearly remember a space wizard. I mean, I remember a space wizard. <laughs> Harold wholeheartedly believes that Leia's plea for help makes all the more sense after Obi-Wan Kenobi. It answers the questions of why him? So help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope, feels less arbitrary as a choice and a decision now that we know the depth of the history they have together. No, the question is, like, he keeps coming back to this. He will repeat the same sentence over and over again. I like the fact it helped reinforce and better articulate a little piece of the jigsaw that is already in place. She also ends up naming her son Ben. First of all, don't link anything to the new trilogy. That's a losing proposition. Just don't do it. You know, you're really tapping the member berries when you're going backwards to tap into Revenge of the Sith and the and the prequels, which 
Look, I am not the biggest fan of those. I know some people really, really like them, but sorry, folks. They just ain't that good. No one, think about it. George Lucas did not direct Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi. Neither of those, and those are both superior movies to Star Wars. In fact, he probably, you know, I know he directed it, but it was the original Star Wars was saved in the editing room, another story that I did previously. So look, if you look into the history of these things, you realize that Star Wars was a collaborative effort that a lot of people put a lot of time into. You know, it's the vision of George Lucas. He's the person with the vision, but ultimately it was saved by amazing special effects people, really great editing. <clears throat> so as we go forward, there's like, there, there's clearly what's weird is is they deliberately put this article out so this guy could put out the fan criticism. This isn't anything about saying like, oh my gosh, how great is it to see Obi Wan back in action, and how great is it to see these new Inquisitors do their thing or whatever. No, this is to specifically answer fan criticisms. That's what this article is for. This is a this is what the access media does. You pay for access so they can deliver their messages, right? There was no line in A New Hope that said we couldn't. There's nothing that I feel like we violated at all. If anything, we've informed those scenes so that some of the choices that we've taken for granted in the original trilogy actually make more sense now. Really? Really? That's what you're going to say? So when Princess Leia is being assaulted on her ship and it's going down... She knows Lord, Lord Vader is hunting her down, and she knows that her father has told her, if you're in trouble, there was an old Jedi, an old general that I knew. He will take care of you. She doesn't go, Dad, I met him like nine years ago, bro. He's cool, man. He's a good guy. He does some great stuff. So, like, here's like the, because they're like, let's not bury the lead. What goes through your mind when you write dialogue for Lord Vader and hear, hear James Earl Jones' voice perform the dialogue? First of all, I've been told that this was not actually James Earl Jones, who's retired from acting and is 91 years old. They used a voice modulator, and like they, they pieced together a lot of his, his, his audio. I mean, he did read a copy of the Bible, which is fantastic. And I love James Earl Jones. It was great to hear his voice. And then they're also talking about the other positives. This is a reunion for you and Hayden Christensen. But what did they really want to get to? They really wanted to talk about Leah is the Grogu type surprise of this series, and Vivian Lyra Blair is dazzling in the role. Who asked that question? Who? Access Media. Not no normal human being is gonna say Leia is the Grogu type surprise. First of all, I ain't buying a little doll of Leia. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Baby Yoda's here to stay. Baby Princess Leia, what do you what kind of merchandise are you gonna sell with that? Like who what crack are you smoking that you think that that's important? And he goes, Oh, uh was Leia already involved to this degree when you joined the series? He's like, to this degree? I can't remember. It was always on board. And it was the uh, most interesting way of getting Obi-Wan out of hiding. Right. Right. I just, I, who's pushing this? Why is this a thing? I just, I don't understand it. Um, this is about the rewrites. There was already a batch of scripts rewritten and Ka Kathleen Kennedy described them as too bleak. So clearly rewrites had to be done. We've talked about this numerous times. Then they, and, and then, you know, when you're reinventing the past, how do you recontextualize the future? So when she says, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope, feels less arbitrary as a choice. It wasn't arbitrary. It was something her father told her to do. It's like saying that, hey, my dad gave me a really good idea to go talk to this guy. He knows things. He'll take care of you. We'll, we'll take you. He'll, he'll do what you need to do. That, who doesn't have that in their lives? Why does it need to be recontextualized? Um, there's a, a, a reference to to the meth lab in Breaking Bad and the meth lab in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Whatever. Don't care. 
Uh, he won't confirm anything because he doesn't want to tip his hand on whether or not what Riva is and and what's going on. But he's he's literally asking all the questions that the fans have been criticizing them against, and all this nonsense about her like being treated poorly or whatever. I, I just think that's all nonsense. Nothing against the actor. Her part is written poorly, and she's being directed poorly. And the director is not a good director. Like you can just see it. There, there's tons of logical gaps. People teleport all over the place in this show. One second I'm at one end of a tunnel, and one second I'm at the the emptying part of the tunnel. How did I get through there? Not see anybody in the tunnel? Who knows? Nobody can answer any of these questions. The other thing, and a spoiler for this. Is Rupert Friend's Grand Inquisitor different from Jason Isaac's Grand Inquisitor on Rebels? These are the questions the fans are asking. Why do you say Rebels is canon and then you kill off this character in Kenobi? Why? What are you doing? And does he answer the question? He goes, no, I'm not going to speak about it, but I love what the actor did. Fluff piece. Total fluff piece. In general, the, uh, the conversation about the fr prequels frustrates me. So they're just talking about, they, they get in this conversation like, there's no stakes in the story because you know Obi-Wan Kenobi can't die. Yeah, we all know that. But what we get, what they here's the problem, is they took a show and they're like, well, how do we write a show about this? We know that Sir Alec Guinness becomes this zen-like calm monk warrior. How do we get him there? Well, there's no story, if he, according to them, if he's already the badass Jedi that you would think him to be. So they're like, no, we have to bring him down so we can bring him back up. Why? It's just lazy, poor story writing. I mean, this is a long article. And um, I'm trying to think what else. There, there was like a couple other components. But he does come back to that same question where he goes, um, why this seems like revisionist history. And he's like, no, we're putting back in more context into what happened but it just it doesn't make any sense so people here's the question i've always believed that a new hope was vader and obi-wan's first and only reunion since their fateful duel in revenge of the sith in in a new hope he literally says to him ah master the circle is complete this is vader speaking uh, when I first last left you, I was but the learner, but now I am the master, and blah, 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 blah. Like, they go into this whole thing. Clearly, that would have made sense at the end of the Battle of Mustafar, where you have, at the end of Revenge of the Sith, Obi-Wan and Vader fighting. And guess what? Uh, Obi-Wan could still consider him his student at that point, still teaching him lessons. And now they're just like, nah, they randomly fought a couple times in the middle of, like, nine years ago. No big deal. And they go, They. this is what the guy says. There was no line in A New Hope that we said couldn't do what we... And one could argue from Obi-Wan's from a certain point of view. So they're saying that because Obi-Wan lies all the time, that they could just fit it in there. Really? That's what you're going to tell me. Why not give context as to why Obi-Wan lies all the time? Maybe he's on Tatooine just trying to hide Luke lying about things the entire premise of the show that princess leia gets taken is ridiculous she is the daughter of like the president of alderaan or the whatever bell organa's role is there he's a senator right the dude has an army at his disposal he could easily order a an army in fact the emperor would probably support him sending troops after someone stealing his daughter why wouldn't the Emperor support that if he felt that Bail Organa was still supporting what the Emperor was doing? Why wouldn't he send a bunch of stormtroopers to go track this girl down? Why not? Yet, instead, he's got to find Obi-Wan Kenobi. And he's got to go see him in person. Which he could have done if he had the plans of the Death Star. He could have just talked to Obi-Wan directly instead of having his daughter be the go-between. The whole point was to have his daughter, Leia Organa Solo, go on the ship and deliver the message to Obi-Wan Kenobi so they could deliver it in secret so that Bail Organa wouldn't be exposed. They don't care. They're just like, hey, whatever, let's just rewrite this whole thing. So anyway, I wanted to point this out to you because I this stuff just drives me crazy. When they 
when, when, and, and to have a reporter literally come back and ask him the same questions like, hey, the, the, this is literally what's being criticized to you. And, and here's the softball an question. Can you answer it? And, and I'm sure they were given the questions ahead of time, which is fine. I'm okay with that. But you just recontextualize everything and it clearly shows you like they had their own they look if you have your own story you want to tell tell your own story do it with a bunch of different jedis don't go back and crap all over the originals don't destroy the canon why what's the point what's the point of doing this why so that you can try to use just enough member berries to get us to pay for this nonsense to me that's just disrespectful what are you doing let me know what you think below are you feel like you're being disrespected for this are you going to buy a Princess Leia doll? Is that what you're going to do? No, I want more Grogu. I don't even want to call him Grogu. I want more Baby Yoda. Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe. We really could use it. It's a really big help to our channel if you do so. And allows us to make more content where I slowly lose my mind as I watch all these things. That I'm getting tired of watching because this is nonsense. This is just garbage. And look, I know the average Star Wars person is just like, Oh, whatever, man. Like, who cares? The franchise was built on 30 years of hardcore fans not getting in any material for like 30 years. And then the prequels come out. You build a rabid fan base based on like the nuggets you got from the original series and expanded universe. And then you tell those people who bought all of that merchandise and all of that product and those stinking ad ads and all that other crap that your what you grew up on doesn't matter we can make whatever we want we don't care it's irrelevant that's not the way you treat a fan base that's the way you get dis you disrespect people so anyway like subscribe we love you we appreciate it thanks for listening to me just lose my mind again but for me i am on to the next one